Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I kind of said it. That was melodic. Welcome back. Oh, I don't know. I just hopped in. Good. To another episode it. of Black Girls Texting. It's Glenn introducing the pod. I don't think I've ever done this in the history of Black Girls Texting. Wait, I'm joined... really? No, I've never done it. it wow. Feels good. I feel powerful. It's great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Chels Pinky. Um, Shahe is caught up on the job, but you will hear from her later in the episode. So, the two of us are going to hop into our on read or replies. You want to kick it off? Yeah. Chat. I mean, I'm super negative this week. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I think I have two on reds. Um, so, oh, and actually, no, I'll reply to Wakanda forever. I saw the film. Um, I thought it was beautiful. I loved seeing, um, now I feel like I'm going to fuck it up, but like Mayan. Yeah. 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 Culture on the screen um i thought it was beautiful even though obviously it's fantasy um marvel but it was like beautiful to get that like taste yeah. um and made me curious about like researching more totally um, i will I say i hated to see them fighting i'm like why is this another movie where the people where they're fighting and whitey is sitting in the conference room and it's all their fault but that's like, real that's just real it's just oh uh... And oh, all yeah. over the sciences, there were some plot holes. Yeah, plot I thought holes. it was a great film. Everyone <laughs> should go see it. <laughs> but yes, you should go see it. <laughs> um, oh, Angela, that woman Ooh, can stunning. act. I don't want to spoil it. So never mind. Yeah, don't spoil it. And also my, I would say Trinidadian brother, but he's actually from Tobago. <laughs> also love him. He can also act. He's What's amazing. His name? Winston? Yeah, Duke. Winston Duke. Winston Duke. Yes. Um. Look at me. I had all these on reds, but now I have some replies. Okay, can we do two on red replies since Shade's not here? Yeah, I'll yeah, go yeah. fast. Okay. My other reply is Karen Bass, first ever black woman mayor of Los Angeles. Let's go. I did my part in the campaign. I will be honest and say I did not vote. This is my first time ever not voting. I could not vote because I don't have even though my friend said I didn't need to, but when I went to DMV, I was like, I need a license and da, da, da. I don't have a California ID, basically. What? Yeah, but I will be able to vote next time. But I did donate to her campaign. I you did, did. Like, you were promoting, you were promoting her. Yes. And I'm so happy she won. So shout out to that. And she beat a fucking billionaire that spent, I think, over 100 million on his campaign. And she's not a billionaire. Um, And he still lost. Oh, that's so heartwarming. Oh, my God. That's hopeful. I love yeah. that. The thing is, also, he he ran as a Democrat, but he was like a lifelong Republican and just like switched. Right, right. Kinda I think like I heard Trump about him. Did. Exactly. Um, and then something that I'm leaving on red. Well, two things. I'm going to go really fast with the first one. The first one is a man in Ontario is resorting to medically assisted death. So it's called um, M-A-I-D, made medically assisted death. Um, instead of living and because he's homeless and there's a oh. lack of support for homeless people. And I just am so disgusted by that. Like the That's fact that wild. like there are not enough resources and this is Ontario, but I mean, the shit exists in America too. Mm -hmm. Um, except it's probably illegal to have medically assisted deaths in America. True. I'm pretty sure. True. I remember I that. Yeah. But That's yeah. How so sad intense. is that? Yeah. That is so, so intense. Very sad. It made me sad, and I'm leaving that on red. But something that I have a lot more information on, and it's also making me fucking livid, is this Shanquella Robinson story. Yeah, girl. Mess. So if you don't know, Shanquella Robinson, a girl from Charlotte, I believe she was 25 years old, went to Mexico on a trip with some friends, guys and girls. Alleged friends. Right. Mm -hmm. Right alleged friend not friends yeah fake friends um and in less than 24 hours died um the cause of death i feel like there's some gray area online on like whether it was um well at the time, yeah 
they reported yeah. it as alcohol poisoning when it first came out but the the girl's family like when they got the autopsy there it showed a fractured spine and a broken neck mm-hmm. and they're like how is that alcohol poisoning and then yeah. later videos surface of one of these quote-unquote friends like fighting her jumping her yeah fighting her and she was not fighting back she not clearly back. maybe just woke up or maybe was drunk but or right. or maybe she just didn't want to fucking fight exactly <laughs> she was butt naked and the girl is just like beating her up it's a disgusting video um and i'm just like it just makes me so sad because i've been on so many like girls trips and like you know maybe you don't like everyone on the trip and it's also just like scary because it's like it's scary it's like you're in another country with people that you came there with and like okay we had a disagreement but like for it to get to that level you're hitting somebody so hard that you cause death and then all of y'all conspire and come up with a lie. Y'all, yeah. People stood by and filmed. It was just oh, terrible was, all around. That was the worst. That was the it's worst just, thing how could to y'all? watch people film and say like, why aren't you fighting back instead of You could at least fight up? back, girl. Like, what? This is not, this is not light work. This is not chill somebody yeah. she died like this is not this is crazy this is actually crazy and this is stuff that people talk about where it's like have we lost our sense of humanity mm. like what it's troubling it's, it's super up. troubling it's and troubling and then you sent that thing where i don't want to misspeak but i believe um there was something online where like one of the people that was there was saying that if people like she would give her interview Inter- to the highest cash apper yeah. To talk about yeah. what happened on the trip. So now that was we're going around capitalizing Twitter. off of this this terrible thing. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's Throw scary. Like it makes me think about, you know, just like being very thoughtful when you're traveling with a group of people, like who you're traveling with, you know, can you trust these people with your life? If somebody gets out of pocket and like you're on the floor getting your ass be on the verge of dying. Is someone going to jump in or are they going to record? Are they going to stop it? Like, are you with people who have the capability to snap that way? Because obviously the woman, the other woman like right. lost control. Like I don't exactly. see how someone sane could do that, but um, yeah. And just that's a just very right sad there. You gotta situation. know who you're, who you're around too. Mm. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Well, yeah, that's that's yours. You, and mine. you took us to the dark place on the end. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, maybe I can try to maybe bring one reply um, in the mix here. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's this page. Um, this, this, this girl's Instagram handle is called off beat orbit o f f beat o r b i t um mm-hmm. she posted something recently her husband is dying of like a rare stomach cancer um and i had seen like a, a gofundme going around for this earlier in the year i guess he had gotten it like maybe a year ago rebounded from it things looked like they were going to be better and then it came back again and both he and his wife accepted the fact like that he wasn't going to be able to fight it this time. And now mm. they're just working to make the t- his time here as good and loving as possible. So they decided to get married and they did it in a week. They planned this wedding and did it in a week and it looked absolutely beautiful. And they did it all with the strength of their friends actually and community. So friends of theirs that are like pastry chefs made a cake. This one of their friends is an event planner. So she planned the wedding um, just every little thing that people could do to pitch in, they did. Everybody took a task. I love that. And it was absolutely beautiful. Like, the, if you go on the girl's page, she has a reel about it. I was watching it the other night. I burst into tears because oh I was thinking God. about, like, yeah, like, on the alternative, there is there are opportunities for us to be blessed so abundantly where we can just meet people from that we don't know from nowhere else in the world and suddenly – they are family to us or they fill our lives with like so much love and they're mm-hmm. willing to do something like that for you. Like I was thinking about what those conversations must have, must have felt like and how their friends looked at them probably as a couple and were like, I would want nothing more 
than to support this love like as much as I can like count me in what do you need and I just think that is absolutely beautiful um and then something really stupid I'm gonna leave on red are (laughs) those cartoon nails have you seen those nails that people are trying they they look like comic book oh it's like they have the black line the black line with that little shiny thing on there but it's like they make it look like it's 3d but it's oh god you have a picture why yeah I want to find it because literally my explore page shows it to me all the time all the time and I'm like why do y'all think I would like something like this like please get this out of here yes these Ooh, I don't know why they grind my gears this don't look good on YouTube for the visual (laughs) yeah that's it's not cute it's not cute it, like, okay, that looks, one just looks white. Look, it looks like it's like a cartoon. Yeah. Like I can see the the the, the idea, but I just really the nails kind of look big. Yeah, they look clunky. <laughs> like no, especially because I'm becoming like a nail girl now. So my I know I'm. Is, I'm such I'm a nail admiring girly. your nails right now. I'm I'm loving my nails right now. Um. So I'm always like looking for inspo and they keep showing me these damn cartoon nails and I'm never going to do it. So they need to leave me be. Oh, I thought she was about to show me cartoon nails, girl. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> what do you have? Like they're like reflective. So it's like the they're different. The cat eye, you know, the magnet one. I love but that. Then she, yeah. then she put like you can't really tell, but she put like chrome on these. Two. I see. And then like this, she did a different design with the magnet and then put Ooh. chrome on these bitch it's the way it's reflecting the light you see the the the, the tips of your fingernails have like light they're yeah. like bouncing she just be experimenting see that and that's the thing that we always talk about right like please when i go to the nail tech please, please just do something. make something up like please don't put me too in too many this options stress. yes okay <sighs> um moving right along hotline, hotline bling, bling. I mean, just like Friendsgiving stuff, lots of mm. Friendsgivings, which will be cute. Taking it back to the good, the good kind of friends. Yeah. <laughs> friends to be thankful for. <laughs> yes. Who knows? They might poison you. Just oh kidding. my God. <laughs> oh my God. JK. Um, yeah. yeah. Friendsgivings are always fun. They're cute. Very nice. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. It's time for the group chat. chat, chat. Y'all, our Black girl doing shit this week is such a baddie. If you're listening, I highly recommend that you go hop on the YouTube or get on the IG and see her looking stunning and blue. But we have Nicole Alabi in the building. Nicole and I actually worked together back in the day, but she is a luxury fashion girly. She's been working in the fashion industry for over 15 years. She lives in New York City in what she's calling her creamy, dreamy, palace downtown manhattan and in addition to being fashionista just knowing the style knowing the grace on this episode we're going to jump into more just about nicole but we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of of dating so if the girlies want to learn a thing or two get your pens and pads out and let's jump into the group chat nicole Thank you so much for joining us. I feel like when we decided to do this episode, drunkenly <laughs> ran up to you at Dumbo House. <laughs> it was after I did that balcony chat about how the Dave infamous attention. <laughs> yes, yes. And I want to get into all of that. Um, firstly, I'd love the listeners just to learn more about you um, as we jump in. We know each other from work. We used to work with each other back in the day. And I always thought you were... Stunning, but also very smart. So please, like, give a little rundown on on sure. more about you. I'm in Providence, Rhode Island, because that's where Nigerians go. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, my parents went there to go to college, ended up having three kids by graduation, um, knew they were not going to stay in the state. So we ended up moving to Toronto, where I grew up, which is, was, is probably one of the biggest blessings of my life. Toronto is such a liberal, diverse place to grow up. And it just opened up the world to me. Mm. Um, from there, I went to Howard University, had a very short and inconsistent stint at Howard University School of Law. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very inconsistent, very wonky. Um, but I've been in the fashion industry basically my whole career, like starting in high school in retail and now working for a luxury brand, the ultimate luxury brand. Mm. And 
I'm just a happy person. I love that. I, I love, love that. my life. That's amazing. That. So yeah, we have this segment called Hotline Bling, which talks about like what's blowing up your phone. And when I tell you I was blowing up the girls' phones with this balcony mm-hmm. chat. So what started the balcony chat? Because from my understanding, you posted a story and then people kind of started losing their shit. But were you thinking about maybe doing it prior? Like, give us a little rundown there. I had posted a story in the evening that was like, hey, my date has COVID. Anyone want to hang out? DM me. And my <laughs> DM started going crazy and not with people trying to, but with people being like, that's right, girl. Be yada, yada. I was like. I woke up because I ended up falling asleep and I woke up and I was like, that, that wasn't the, what I was trying to do. Basically I had an outfit and my hair's done and I don't want to waste it. It's not about being intentional, but I realized a lot of the messages I was getting from women was about being intentional. So in the morning I posted, um, the most psychotic kiss of death thing you can ever do is date with intention. And then I went to get a coffee and my DMs were even more crazy. So I was like, I think I need to explain what I mean. And ultimately, I just feel like anyone who says they're dating with intention is really saying that they are not enjoying dating and they want to get off this ride. And that is the last person you should actually date. Well, question, what do people date for? What do you think people date for? Or what do you date for? I date for dating. I think I I liken it to working out. If the only reason you want to work out is to lose weight, you will never enjoy working out. Like Mm. you have to be open to what comes with working out because if you want to lose weight, working out is not the only way. It's not even the best way you you could control what you eat. You could, there's other ways to, you can get lipo. There's other ways to lose weight. So if your only goal is to get married, marriage, dating is not the only avenue to get there. And you'll never enjoy dating if you're always thinking about getting married. Mm. But more on the dating thing, like what, like you say, you liken it to working out, right? Like it's just a, it's a part of a, it's a lifestyle. So what do you get out of the process of dating? Do you find that it allows you to get to know yourself better or like, yeah. I think there are two goals in dating. One, to get to know someone, but also to get to know what you like and don't like. Because oftentimes we're projecting, we're conflating the two and you end up projecting one or the other on someone who doesn't even know you. You know, I had this conversation with my sister yesterday. My sister's one of those, these kind of girls on Instagram who gets a lot of DMs. Body, yaddy, yaddy. Body, yaddy, yaddy girls. And someone asked her for coffee that she's really attracted to. And she's spiraling. And I'm like, why are you spiraling? And she's just like, I just don't want to fall for someone who's broke. And I'm like, how did we get from? I am dead. Like, how did you even get from like this ice mocha to falling for someone and losing (laughs) everything you have? Like, that's just weird. There's just too much dream casting. So I just think Hmm. it just should start with the, when you see someone you're attracted to, your goal should be to go on a date, not to get married. Not my goal is to go on a date. And then after a good date, my goal is to go on a second date. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe in incremental goals when it comes to dating. But when you find yourself dream casting and future projecting on someone who you don't even know their middle name, you don't know who they voted for yesterday. You don't know anything (laughs) about them. How can they hold your hopes and dreams? But you know what's ironic is the way you talk about, like, thinking about it in increments. That to me actually feels like intentional dating for some reason, you know, because it feels like you're being super present. And you're taking things as they come and you're like taking the person for who they are. Mm -hmm. Dream casting, that's like, doesn't seem intentional at all. That's just kind of like you're going off the deep end. I think that's the miss. Being present, that should be the intention. I think more often than not, when you hear women say, I'm dating with intention, they're saying I'm dating with the intention of marriage. Yeah. Or there's a a checklist already that's pre-made and needs to be met. I think... First off, it's rare to meet people you're attracted to in real life. Yeah, you can scroll that's... all the internet all day and see people you're attracted to all day long, but it's very rare to actually meet someone you're attracted to. So that's actually always my first goal. I want to meet people that I'm attracted to. And then I want to spend time with those people. And then mm-hmm. I want to spend more time with those people. And I want to observe them because I want to see because I think a lot of the things people think they want in a person are behave are 
behavioral. I'm a, you can only observe ca character traits. Do you like to vacation? Oh, great. I like to vacation. We're perfect. That is a behavior. The mm. character trait is on vacation. Do you curse out the staff and act crazy? <laughs> You know, do you get drunk and weird? And we're like, you are not like this at home. Are you an absolute pleasure who's made every day magical? So like the vacation piece, anybody could go on vacation, mm -hmm. but it takes time to observe someone's behavior. And you cannot cast that on a first date. Second dates are so friggin' rare. So friggin' rare. People have no idea. Like you're so casting to marriage. You're probably not about to go on a second date, actually. So you should calm down. <laughs> I have so many questions, so many thoughts. Um, I am someone who always, when talking to my friends about dating, I do use the term like dating intentionally. Um, I don't think of it the first person you date or every date is that's your husband. But I do think of think of it as, do you like them? Like if you don't like them, you don't date them again because there's no possibility there. Like that's how I, I think that. of the in intention, like incremental, as you said. But I had a question when you first talked about being attracted to someone first. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone that you weren't physically attracted to? When I have I ever been in a relationship with someone I wasn't physically attracted to? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no. So attraction, physical attraction is an absolute necessity. It is because I think Black women deserve to be attracted to people. We're being served up these statistics that it's never going to happen for you. So you need to lower a lot of things. And I, you know, I've tried dating people that are good on paper who don't look that good to me. And you try to make them look good to you. But your resume is not about to hold me at night. Your resume cannot make love to me. Your resume cannot crack me up. Your resume, <laughs> I'm like a man I could gossip to. Can I tell you Ooh. things about my coworkers and friends? I cannot do that to your resume. So I want someone who attracts me. And physical is a part of it, but a lot of it is, do you attract me? Do I want to be in your presence? Do I want to be mm -hmm. around you. Exactly. Like, the vibe. That vibe. And I think, you know, I have a lot of, because I'm 36. So I have a lot of women friends that are my age and older who start to like, throw some of that stuff out the window and they treat it like a taxi. Like if your light's on and my light's on, we're, and we're on paper around the same, we're gonna, we can choose to love each other. We can choose to make this work. And I think there's something to that. But if that's what you want, get out of the dating pool, go get a matchmaker, leave the rest of us civilians who like dating alone. We don't mm. want to end up out with someone like you. You know, mm. I just think, Dating, the dating world is for people who are present, who want to get to know someone, who, you know, like you said, who, if I don't really like you, I don't want to see you again. And I'll try to say it in a way that's respectful and kind and the way I would want to receive it. It's people who want to be a part of the mix. If you only want to get to the end game, there are easier ways to get to the end game. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to people that think that dating is not fun? Because mm -hmm. it can feel like, for me, dating feels like a task. Yes. Um, and then also then you go on dates and I haven't had a lot of this experiences like this, but people are just ridiculous or just like tons of psychotic people or people don't look how they thought, how you thought they was going to look on the apps, you know? I always say the number one rule of dating, like if you treat dating like a decision tree, number one is dating is inherently fun, period. Now, it's the other stuff that, can we curse on No. Yes. yes. It's the other stuff that fucks it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but dating the goal of dating is to spend time with someone where the potential for romance is there. That inherently at its core should be a pleasurable thing. Mm -hmm. If the idea of that does not give you pleasurable thoughts, it's not dating you don't like. It's something else. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I think back at the times when I felt like dating was a task, it was because it was, I had rejection on my mind, you know, being rejected by you, rejecting myself. I had um, comparison on my mind. How come these, this person has? How come I don't have? Why is it, you know? I had, I think the times I didn't enjoy dating the most is when I wasn't the happiest with my career, with my finances, with any, you know, things in my life. But dating itself is inherently fun. If I'm sitting across from someone that's just not a good match for me, that really shouldn't ruin my life or my day too much. You know what I mean? And I think it's like, if it does ruin it so much that you don't want to get out there, it's not the dating and it's not that person. It's something else. 
that's what I've come to experience. But dating, meeting someone that could potentially be a romantic person in your life, someone to fellowship with, be coupled with, to have sex with, to laugh with, like that part is inherently, that should bring inherent pleasure to your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just have friends who are like, like single dating in LA, black women, and they're like fucking exhausted. Like how many more first dates can I go on? I, I, and these are people who do want to get married. Like they know that they want to get married, but they're also not going to just like throw a fish in the fishing rod and the first fish that bites, they're going to marry. They want to find their person, but like, they're just not finding their person. So mm-hmm. I have a question. Is is marriage something that you do want? Like, is that? Yes. I absolutely want to get married. I just do not have a timeline. I am not married to when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and what kind of person it's going to happen with. I think once I divorced myself from the expectations of timeline of it, I just enjoyed it way more. Even when I divorced myself from the paper, like, I don't ask, I don't care what you do for work. Do you take care of yourself? Mm. Was you taking care of yourself before I came along? Do you live in a box on the subway platform or do you have a home (laughs) that you are happy to come home to? Mm -hmm. That's enough for me at this point because I want to be attracted to you and I want to enjoy your company. So I think one thing that I think is not a stigma or a taboo, but I think if a lot of women, if your goal and men too, if your goal is to be married, what makes you not go to a matchmaker? Do you not want to spend the money? Like there are people, there are mechanisms that are made to like work through a system to literally find you a husband. Like we watch Indian match break. We see what Seema Auntie Seema was, was getting done. Seema Auntie was working. But you know, yeah, but- like, I have a friend. Yeah, they want to have like the, we met, the story. Yeah. Like you don't want it to feel like. Yeah, but you can't have it all. You can't have it all. Yeah. Unfortunately. You have it all. You know, so it's like. Got to go through the trials and tribulations a little bit or just say, you know what, I'm not like I'd rather get to my end goal, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Like, Dang. There's a stigma that that's a problem. But like there have been so many successful marriages that way as well. Yeah, people love that stat, like something about 50 percent of love marriages end in divorce. And like I think it's like 10 percent of arranged marriages. I'm Nigerian. If I really wanted to get a husband, I would get somebody to go to the village, bring me someone, I'll fill out the K-1, the K-9, whatever it is, and have a husband here in the creamy, dreamy palace. (laughs) But I feel like when you see dating as this obstacle to the life you really want, you'll never enjoy dating. Like for me, I I understand that feeling of like, damn, another first date. I think the thing we all have to accept is like, you will have way more first dates than second dates. Mm-hmm. If your goal is to get married, your jo- you only need one. You only need one of them to hit. Mm-hmm. So maybe volume is the name of the game. I'm not saying it is, but maybe it is. Yeah. But I just think that like, it's the frustration that I wish more women, especially more Black women would release. I think it really comes from, this is something I learned in college. So like I said, I grew up in Toronto, a very liberal place. We drink in age is 19. You got a fake idea at 15. I've been in the clubs since a teen. By the time I got to college at Howard, which has a reputation of being a party school, but really only, it's a very conservative. They uptight. I went to Howard too. I remember when I got there, I was like smoking weed, doing all types of things. Everybody was like, oh my God. And so I found like the people that were like with the shits. (laughs) I had the same experience. I remember coming and being like, I remember the summer before I got to Howard, cutting off all my dudes and be like, I'm going to Howard like... (laughs) I can't even really talk to y'all no more. It's about to be college boys soon. I remember getting there and being like, well, I, I could have had a way more fun summer. Like it's, it was very conservative. And Howard introduced the idea to me of like, what good girls do and what bad girls do. Mm-hmm. And all the things that I did in high school, because like I said, I've been dating since I was 15. Like in high school, I would have two, three dates in a week, guys from other schools, from just places. And I got to Howard and I was like, oh, good girls have promise rings and good girls have boyfriends and good girls have a college sweetheart, you know? And at Howard, I learned that some girls do get rewarded for that path. The girls who don't get rewarded from that path are very angry. I have a lot of suburban middle-class Black girls in my life who are in their 30s and don't have what they thought they were supposed to get from being very good girls. Hmm. And um, I think that's a lot of the frustration we see with Black professional women. I did everything right. 
I did not sleep around. I did not have a baby in high school. I got a degree. I got two. I actually got three. I'm practically Michelle Obama of my community. Where mm-hmm. is mine? The patriarchy, mine right man. And yeah. that, really it. that frustration. Yeah, it's just like it's 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 hard being a black woman because I I don't know. I don't know where I stand on this yet. Like when I think about when I have daughters, for example, and I talk to them about dating, because I specifically remember at my boarding school, this very wealthy white girl saying, I need to go to Princeton because I want my husband to be from Princeton. And she was dead ass serious. She wanted a husband from Princeton. I think she probably ended up getting a husband from Princeton, but like she was marriage minded, if that's like the term we want to use since high school. Yeah. And but is like, she happy? I, I don't know. I don't know if she's happy, but I, I don't know where I stand yet. I'm still like grappling with it. Like, do we tell girls or young women like live it up, like whatever? Or do we say like, OK, this is a great pool. Find You could find your person in this pool, like in school, for example. Like, that's a great place you could have found someone. Because I also have friends who are our age, late 20s, early 30s. Oh. And. She also be acting like she's 25 years old. <laughs> and they're no, I'm kidding. I'm 29. Um, and they are, they're like feeling nervous already. And I'm like, okay, guys, we're still so young, but now's the time where people are getting engaged and people mm-hmm. are starting to couple up. And like my friends who are not, they're like, am I just gonna be single? Whatever. Like they're it's almost like they're giving up yeah. already. Don't give up. I think it's a it's all about pathing. You know, if there was anything I wish I had known in college was to be more marriage minded, because that's the one time in your life you're going to be in a pool like that of men and women amongst each other. Interesting. But I will say once you leave that, you can't look back. Mm. You can't look back. Like, I don't think it's wrong to get on a path and prioritize things like prioritizing your personal life, prioritizing your romantic life. But I also think it's part of growing up to take stock of where you are today, how you have changed, how the world around you has changed, and maybe get on another path. That's okay too. But college, I think college is a great place to be like, I will find my husband. Girl, there wasn't no men at Howard. Blanche, when I was there, at the med school. honestly. No, I know. I need to, I was t- talking to the wrong people, the promoters and the people right. trying to like. <laughs> the scammers. The rappers. Mm. <laughs> When I was at mm-hmm. Howard, you know, there was no one. And now I'm looking back with my 36 year old brain, you know, like I was just at homecoming looking too good, honey, too good. If yes. y'all put this on video, pop up a side by side of me at homecoming because I was looking good. <laughs> I was looking too good. And I was looking at some of the guys I used to like, and they were looking like, Meh. you Girl, know, see? Not so it's well. just one of those things like you just can't look back. Like in college, that is the only time you're going to be in a pool of men and women growing together, got four years together. So if you want to be marriage minded, that's a good place. But when you're out in LA, New York, Atlanta, in your mid thirties and everyone's at different stages and walks of life and different priority levels, you can't beat yourself up mm-hmm. for things not shaking out the way you want because College is the last time we were all on the same level doing the same thing. Yeah. You know? I'm torn on that, though, because you know what? I think everybody has their their journey and, like, what they are looking for. What I do want to say for any young people that are listening is if that is a goal of yours to try to sit with the why. Mm -hmm. Like, is it That was my question. It is so ingrained in you that this is what you're supposed to do. And so you're just following a path of what's is seemingly correct. Mm-hmm. Or is it because you are the type of person that genuinely really values that type of partnership and relationship? And you know that, you know, the streets are not for you. But if you think the streets could be for you, go to that. Encourage everybody to go devil up in the street real quick. Run you know? I feel like the streets, I feel like the streets were just like, I was talking to one of our mutual friends today. We were FaceTiming and she was like, yeah, you were out here. You had your roster. And I was like, yeah, but I was, it just was, It for some people, like they want their person. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you recognize that, I agree with you, then you should focus on that. But I do have a question. Mm-hmm. Timeline. So we're all women, right? So there's yeah. obviously very different for us versus being a man. 
if you want a family, which obviously is a big if not everyone wants that. But how do you think about not dating intentionally in relation to like your biological timeline? Freeze them eggs. I have, you know, when I was around 33, I went through a very depressive episode. I looked up and I felt like nothing in my life was going right. I remember nights screaming into my pillow. And one night I asked myself, who are you screaming at? (laughs) (laughs) And I, you know, it was like a voice spoke to me and was like, no one is going to rescue you. Mm. You have to design the life you want. And it really showed me that like, I had been making a lot of decisions and putting off a lot of decisions because I thought someone was going to come clean up my mess. You're going to pay off these school loans. You're going to put a little more in my 401k. You're going to do this, going to do that. And so my philosophy is I, Nicole Alabi, am the only one that can design the life that I want to live. Period. If someone else comes into it, they are gravy. But if I want to be a mom, I don't need a husband to be a mom. Mm. I don't need a husband to be a mom. If I don't want to be a mom, I can, and I still want to be a wife, then I have all the time to be a mm-hmm. wife. Like, I just am always checking in with myself. You know, when I first moved to New York, I struggled to find a job and I was interviewing everywhere, all these things. And a friend of mine asked me, what's your dream job? And I was like, I could see myself. Yeah. And she was like, no, what is your dream job today with your experience and qualifications today? And I said, assistant buyer. Once I channeled my energy in that way, I got an assistant buyer job. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do with myself always. With what's going on in my life right now, what do I want? Not what I want 50 years down the line. What do I want right now? So today, I don't have a strong desire to be a mother. I don't have that, you know, and I'm actually seeing someone right now. It's been a couple months. But I remember saying this to him and I said, for me, I have a hard time imagining a child without knowing their daddy. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's just hard for me to think that far ahead. Like, I don't know. So I don't have that strong desire today. So I think for women who absolutely want to become mothers, you can don't have to have a husband to become a mother. If you want to become a mother with a husband, you can freeze your eggs. You can adopt. There are just so many more options to us. But like, once we start dream casting on the timeline, I mean, I'm already 35. 35 is geriatric age. If I don't meet yes. someone in the next two years, then I'll have to, like, I, I we can't do that because yeah. then every single person you have a frigging coffee with, you're putting that on them and they can feel that from you. I agree. I think for me, I resonated with your video and we'll link it so everyone can watch it. Um, Cause I think it's, it's a really interesting conversation. And a lot of the points that you made doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. I'm not necessarily saying that everyone who dates intentionally is like, you know, drawing out Romeo and they're, you know, little notepad but I definitely was creating a narrative my therapist and I already talked about this I'm a future tripping ass bitch I plan (laughs) everything and so it was making dating very like uh, ah. like I just wasn't going into it with like a calm and clear mind which I think is important in terms of the having fun and once I let a lot of that go and just was like let's go have this meal and have a drink and just have a good old time. I I enjoyed myself more. And even with people that maybe this isn't the best, but I also just like a good time. Even with people who I was like, yeah, you're not the one. I was like, but I like our Sundays going to the bar and watching football. So I'm going to keep doing that almost like a friend. And then, you know, if you want to sleep together, might as well, because you're already here. So I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. And it worked out for me. And then when I got to a point where I wanted to be more serious, I personally cut a lot of that off and I sat with not necessarily, oh, I want a man or I want this, but like, I was like, I want companionship. I want someone who, you know, means these different things to me. And I, and I really was intentional about those needs, less of he gotta be, well, he had to be fine, but you know, he gotta have this, this and that. And it, it really helped my perspective. And it also just made me less anxious like I don't want people yeah. running around anxious feeling like it's the end all be all and it just sucks all the fun out of your life yeah yeah I think also more women should know that you think you are 
eliminating. Like you don't, I'm intentional. You don't have what I want. So, oop. but sometimes, and I had this conversation with my sister, sometimes they are self, they're opting out of you. Mm. Because they're feeling your energy. They're feeling your vibes. And they feel like you've done them a favor. They're like, thank yeah, that's mm. great. Appreciate it. You know, like she was just, she was talking about how, um, coffee is like not a real date to her like I just feel like if someone's serious about you they'll take you to dinner I was like he cannot be serious about you he don't know you mm. he's serious about a stranger but a maniac you know <laughs> and I was like she's like I can and she was saying like all these guys that have asked me for coffee that I've weeded out I'm like you think you weeded out but they were like I dodged a bullet with that crazy gold digger. You know what I'm saying? I, it's true. Like, I think so many people think I'm so intentional. I am, I am selecting, but you're putting a wall up and people are looking at your wall and be like, good. I wasn't even trying to scale that, sis. Thank you for that. And now you alone. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a good Behind ass point. And you know? I've actually been seeing that conversation too. So like, just talking to talk more about the actual date. Do you think a first date needs to be, well, you, I feel like you obviously don't. I was going to say, do you think a first date needs to be elaborate? No, no. What about a second? I think a second date, I think a second date should feel the most formal. Okay. Because second dates are a hurdle. Not, we're not all getting to second dates. Everyone is not getting to second dates. Like if we were in a room for a hundred people and asked them, how many of you have been on a first date this year? a little over half the day, hands could go up. How many been on a second? Maybe 10%. Mm. So to me, a second date should feel the most formal. Like it should feel the most datey, like a dinner in the evening. But I feel like the first date is just to meet. Because the first time I saw you, we didn't really meet. <laughs> we got, you know, we connected. Whether it was on an app or we met somewhere at a bar, but that's not really like, taking the time to get to know each other. So really that first date is your actual real meeting. You know, a friend of mine, she met a guy at Dumbo House. She lived out of town, met a guy at Dumbo House. They really just met. She goes back to her city and they're talking every day, 30 days, blah, blah, blah. Like they're FaceTiming every day. Like she's believing she's inside of a relationship practically. And then she comes back to New York to visit him and after that weekend, he was like, yeah, not that interested. She was really blindsided. And I, I said, mean, I would be blindsided too. After he sounds like a psycho. Yeah, what the me. fuck? And I told her, I was like, in reality, that was only your second date. You think you were on the phone for 30 days, but you were not in their presence. You weren't yeah. sitting Some down. Some people just like company. Some people, one thing I always tell women, dudes are birds too. They are They're birds too. The biggest birds. It sounds like a they cycle. like to have somebody. They like to see somebody's name come across their phone. They like the attention too. So like, it's really a second date. I think in instances like that, I told her I was like, "Can I tell you what I would have done different?" Because I'm, I'm tell you what I would have done different. <laughs> I would come back to New York. I would not have stayed with him at all. Just because you've had that thirty days of talking, you would never stay over someone's house for a weekend on a second date. So why oh, does true. thirty days of FaceTiming equal? That this is still a second date. Yeah. I'm like, I would have stayed with a friend. Bring you Jamie Fallis. That's what I would have done. <laughs> I would have met up with him and come back to my friends. I'm like, another thing I would have done is have my own plans. Mm -hmm. He needs to see you're a very desirable hot commodity. Absolutely. But you're in a house for three days. Like anyone would get tired of someone they've only met once in their house for three days. It has nothing to do with you. You're not wrong. You're not bad. He's not, he's probably still attracted to you, but who wants somebody on a second date in their house for three days? Some, Some people would even I say would they couldn't have entertained the FaceTimes. I remember? would not. Well, so I would. I don't FaceTime. I don't phone bone. I'm 36. That, it's not phone bone. I love that. Wait, I was, that made me think about this book, The Rules. And we had Brooke DeVard on and she spoke about how she kind of used it. And that's how she met her husband. Have you heard of The Rules book? I have it, but now I'm going to pick it up. Okay. So there are some things in there. Like, I'll just throw some at you. Like, um, never accept a weekend date unless you get the invitation, like before Wednesday, there are, there's a bunch of rules. Yeah. It's like all these things that you should and should not do. And it sounds like you have some rules of your own. Yeah. Are there like certain things where you're like, these are my rules, not breaking these rules for anyone. 
my rules are not so much about behaviors. They're, my rules are to protect my mental. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to find myself in a situation where I'm in a fantasy of my own making. I don't ever want to find myself dream casting or future casting on someone I don't even know. So I don't like to talk on the phone. Like you have, we have to have gone on a couple of dates for you to have that kind of time for me because it's so easy to be on the phone for two hours and be like, oh my God, we just love each other. You know, like you don't, you've only been in this person's presence twice for a total max net six hours. You don't know this person. So for me, I don't like to really talk on the phone. Wait, I also, you don't think you can get to know somebody on the phone? Like, no, <laughs> no. And I've been doing this 21 years. Uh, <laughs> Intimate conversations. Is it because you feel like you have to be like present with that person? Yeah. So you're not alone. You're not doing long distance. I no. unless we, unless we became long distance, but like, I would not intentionally go into a long distance relationship. And I used to, I used to be in a, that kind of person where I could do long distance. And then there'll be those moments. Like I had this guy, we have time for a little story. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Very happy>. yes. <laughs> so I met this one guy years before we dated. I was at a bar with someone from law school who was like, oh, another classmate's coming. And because I was a law school delinquent, I didn't know any of my classmates. So the girl <laughs> shows up, like I barely went to class. I'd be like, is that a final today? Oh my God. Um, and the girl shows up and she's like, oh, this guy I'm dating is coming. So he comes. I remember when he walked in, I was like, and I remember saying to myself, you know how when you have a conversation with yourself, which actually talking to God, I was like, good for her because her man is fine. And I remember how attentive he was and how close he was to her and just how good he was with the group. And I didn't remember his name, but I remember saying to myself, I want someone like that. Two years later, I see him in an Instagram picture with some girl, click on it. I see he's single and I start doing, I'm like, 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 like. I'm like every pick. All the way down. <laughs> and finally, now we're DMing and then we start talking. We end up going on one really, really great date. But after that, he just started like ghosting me a little bit, like really being just, it just didn't feel like that great date I had. But in my brain, I'm like, I remember how nice he was to her. Mm. I remember that great date. I, I was like not in the reality of what was actually happening to me. So then like maybe another year or two later, he pops back into my life. And because I had all these memories of not of the things that actually happened to me, but what I thought this person was about, he comes back into my life. We're now long distance, living in different cities. We talk every day, every night, FaceTime, every, all of it, just really laying it on. Like he's a serious person. So we decide to meet up five days together. Finally, the worst five days of my life. And I know he's what? watching everything I do. He's going to see this. The worst five days of my life. Every day was worse than the next. Wait, but I how? The first night he got so wet. He met up with friends. I met up with friends. We were supposed to meet up with each other. He shows up to me at the park at 14th in DC, wasted, screaming my name at the door to security. No. So I have to come out like he's with me. They're like, I remember the the male security guy was like, you know, that paternal look like, <laughs> yes, yes, you yes. like you could do so much day. better. That was day one. Day two, he was like, oh, I'm going to have brunch with my friends and, you know, I'll be back. He was gone for like eight hours. No. In the hotel room alone. Oh, hell no. Day three, we had plans. He brought two check bags. We had plans, but he didn't have anything to wear for these plans. So now we spent the whole day shopping for his outfit. What? I wanted to pull my hair out. By day four, we went to a friend, one of my friend's house. He shows up empty handed, is going, asking the person if they got food. He asked the person, you got some cologne I could put on? I was embarrassed. <laughs> Every day, by the fifth day, oh I was God. like, you are a stranger to me. But I realized like all that talking on the phone, like it's not that people lie or fake <laughs> on the phone. Scarred you on the phone. But it's like it's so easy to perform when someone's not looking at you, yeah. feeling your body That's language, true. your energy. Like he couldn't perform in front of me. He could only be his real ass self. And his real ass self was a real ass hole. 
for real, <laughs> you know? And it's funny because they, we're friends now. I'm friends with every guy I ever dated. But he actually a year later was like, I really need to apologize to you about how I treated you. He's like, I was not in a good place. You Would know? you ever spin the block? And No, because I can only go on. And this is why I don't talk on the phone or FaceTime. I can only go on the experiences that have happened to me with you. So we need to have more experiences. So for me, when I think about it, Net, I observed you with someone. I had one good date with you years before. And then we talked on the phone. What made you someone I should spend five days with at a hotel? Yeah, that was extreme. Very extreme. So for me, I think I just, I need to actually have experiences with you so I can rely on those. Not my idea of you, not my image of you. So phone in, FaceTime in, we have to be dating to do that. Yeah. You I also broke the rules. Because you reached out first. According to that book, you should never, you should always let the man come on to you. I hate that rule. That <laughs> rule is bullshit. It's in the rules. I think it might be rule number one. Let me tell you what Yikes. I mean. Bullshit. That rule is bullshit, especially in 2022. What we've all been through in the panoramic and with social media, everything, everyone is so nervous to connect. This idea that a man should just be less afraid of react rejection and less shy than us is so false. The what stops people from approaching people is fear. And the idea that men are just supposed to be inherently more brave than us, it does us a disservice and it's not fair to them. You know, I just think it's just because that's all it is. Someone is not a, not approaching you because they don't value you. They're afraid. Mm -hmm. They don't even know you. You don't know I don't have no value. You don't know me. I could be the most valuable bitch. I could be the least. <laughs> like, you don't know. So, mm -hmm. like, we can't, I think, a lot of the rules I think people have come from someone, you need someone to show you your own value. But why should I show you that you should be on a $300 dinner at La Bernadette? I met you in line for the bathroom at the movies. <laughs> like, who <laughs> are you? I don't even freaking know your ass. So, you know, okay. I, those rules I don't like. I have a question too with the money thing because you said that you aren't as focused on someone's pockets, but that's also a big conversation I think that people are having around like the high value men, the high value women. Especially especially since, which we talked about earlier, black women have been like going to school, doing all the right things, getting all these degrees, earning all these money, getting this high paying job. And yeah. it's like, we're not. Black women are answering their own question. If you are the highest earning and the most educated, from a mathematical standpoint, how, what is the probability that every single one of you are going to get someone that makes more than you? The math don't math. It's just not, like I was just yeah. saying, we got to remove that one. I'm not saying you should be giving it up for somebody who has nothing <laughs> but a wall of Jordans. I mean, like, I'm not saying that. We've seen Jordan Walls, have we not? Yeah, we have. We've all seen Jordan. You know, Walls. they're it's they they're valuable these days on the resale market. <laughs> then sell them. <laughs> but I mean, just from a like, I I was talking to a friend. I was like, "What are you looking for?" She's like, "Rich," and I was like, "You do know <laughs> that only one percent of America can call themselves rich, and less than one percent of the globe." So, from a mathematical standpoint, how? Why do you think, not that you deserve one, because not, it's not about what you deserve, but just from a probability standpoint, how should it net out that you'll get a rich one? Like, that's just such a luck of the draw, a roll of the dice. And also, so, what are you willing to accept? Like, I think we are really in this age of, like, forgetting give and take. I was, um, I was talking to my therapist about this today. I was like, there's a little, little take, and then there's a little give. And I think people are in this like take, take, take mentality and got to be realistic, I think. And also, what do you, did you do? Like, what do you do or bring to the table that you should get somebody to bankroll your life? Mm -hmm. Figure out mm -hmm. what it would take to afford your own life. And someone who adds, I'm a strong believer that two will always be more than one. It just will be more than one. If yours is enough to take care of us, God bless. But if it's not, if the right, the right person and I, we join forces, we'll always have more than I had before I met you. Facts. 
unless it's just a wall of Jordans, but that unless won't it's a wall of Jordans, but also I want more black women to think like, if you're an educated, successful, happy person, you're really not seeing a lot of bums in your circle. So really in your social world and running into, so the differential in what you guys make are in, are like, you might make ten, fifteen thousand dollars more than him, maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars more than him. But if you make two hundred and he make one seventy, he a bum. Right. Mm-hmm. Claim like, him, sis. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, so do you split checks with people and do you believe Ooh. in just like that mutual? Ooh, I love this question. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for me, uh, I don't pull out my card, period. Ever. Not even the fake. No, no. Cause some people will call your bluff. I've never played that game of chicken i will not be like <laughs> i'm never pulling it out i actually when the check comes i use i, I get my most animated i'm telling a good story i'm cracking a uh, joke. <laughs> i'm busy but i will say that even in the give and take thing that you were saying Shade, like after two or three dates if you know you like someone you need to start giving and the way i like to give is that I'll be like, do you want to go to a movie? And I'll get the tickets. Now, will I, will you watch me pull out my card? Because I'll need you to get that burnt into your brain. Let's not get, you know, too comfortable seeing me. She's doing the little kid. She's dodging. Ah, ah, ah. So I don't want you to get too comfortable with that, but I want you to know that to spend time with me doesn't mean you have to break your pockets. Yes. So, like the guy that I'm seeing now, we've been hanging out for like three months. And he loves jazz. I'm like, do you want to see some jazz this weekend? I don't even know what that means. I never, I'm not that into jazz. I don't really like activities. My favorite activity is eating and drinking, but whatever. <laughs> so he wants, he's like, yeah, absolutely. So I'm like Googling the best jazz spots. Every one of these best jazz bars in New York City has a cover charge and you can pay online. So I'm like, $35 for you and me, I have $70. I can get us two jazz Fucking whatever they're called. <laughs> Ticket? You know? Ticket. <laughs> like, I can do that. That's a, no problem. Yeah. It's no problem. But I don't, I, the splitting of the check, I think a splitting of the, oof. That's I'm not splitting one. the check. I don't, I don't split. I think when you're my man, because I would say yeah. in my last relationship, when you see someone as your future, you want to see, you, their, you think of their money as your money. Mm-hmm. And I would say in my last relationship, I was more conscientious of you paying, me paying, us splitting. Because I just felt like, how will you have enough for an engagement ring if we spend it at no Okay, but, wait. But that's further down the line. Yes. Right. On, I, I'm never pulling my card out. He should be but, courting. Yes. Yeah, I think you should be. And I also think that like, and this could be getting too deep in my little feminist noir, but I just think that so many men want, and they're like, where is the submissive woman? You do know for me to submit, you have to lead, right? So became you. I can't be submissive and paying to be submissive. That's crazy as hell. So like, if you actually want to be the kind of man that leads a woman like me, if you want to be the kind of wolf I can run with, you kind of do need to be in charge yeah i i fully agree with a lot of what you're saying and for me when i say i'm not splitting it's down the line yes but like it's then at that point it's tip for tap you got the movie tickets i'm getting the food you got the dinner i'm getting the drinks but when you're courting me for me that needs to be in your budget but at what point have you crossed from courting to dating because I think that when you tell me that we're dating, I'm not playing mind games with you. I'm I would say the person I'm seeing now, we had to have this conversation because he brought it to my attention. He's like, all you do is receive. You don't give in any way. And I was oh, like, shit. hmm. Thank you for the feedback. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> but it was one of the realest conversations I ever had where it's like, No, we're not exclusive yet. But at this point, we've been on seven, eight dates. Like, what should, like, are you just going to always just show up and wait to be asked out? Because how does that person know you care for them? 
or you like yeah, them or you're interested but, they, in them. but I also feel like they need to draw a line in the sand as well because if we're getting to this point where we're going to be more intimate and more serious maybe this is just me and maybe this is more old-fashioned like I need a clear understanding of what your intentions are because mm-hmm. until then it's you it's John it's Tom Maybe less white names, but you know yeah, what I mean? John and Tom, girl. Like, Tom. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's I need, like, if, if we're going on multiple dates and you're like, you're looking for me to show up more as a girlfriend to you or a partner to you, then you need to make that clear that we're doing that together. Because yeah, I'm not I'm doing that the girlfriend way. games. I yeah. feel like you're not in charge of our time. For me, this person I really like, I'm not ready to be exclusive. That's fair as well. I want to, I feel like I want to, I prioritize this person. He's definitely my favorite person. If you're watching, you're my favorite person right now. Other people? November, 2022. You are my favorite. Um, Mm -hmm. But I can, I don't, I'm not ready to be exclusive. I just really want the next person I date to be the last person. So I'm just, I'm okay with taking time. But I think when you're taking someone's time, you want to just show a little bit that you're in it. So Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. me, you know, getting tickets here and there, or when I do come over, picking up something for us to eat, like that kind of stuff is stuff I'm doing. I'm not pulling out my card anywhere. Three months in, I still have never pulled out my card. Um, But I do, I do want him to know that I'm not just like, using you for dinners because i think a lot of men yes 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 yes. well some women do but apparently i i've never been the type like dinner be two hours (laughs) are you that hungry you can sit across from someone you do not like yeah i I cannot i went to towel with this (laughs) guy meal yeah for sure maybe last month this guy took me to towel and he had been asking me out for a while i kept running into him at dumbbells and he's not unattractive i just could feel that he wasn't for me like he i was like he's in his early 40s he's in great shape and no kids and just never been married like he's what hmm. people want i'm like hmm, do i know who this is because somebody been pressing me and with the same uh, bio i mean not that i'm available but i'm just <laughs> saying pressing me <laughs> but i i knew it i could just tell by the conversation we had he was like i'm a conversationalist like if we can't talk we'll never vibe but he had asked me to dinner. He was like, let's go to town. I was like, yeah. And I remember being at that dinner and being like, Nicole, you know better. This is going to be a long one. Oh, oh my no. God. It was so long because there was just nothing to talk about. And he was saying how he don't eat seafood or red meat. I was like, oh, oh why, did no. come why are we here? Why are we here, bro? Right. Like, what do you want? He's like the chicken pot stickers. I'm like, not the kids menu. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, and I remember saying to myself, well, if I have to pay my own way, I'm eating what I want. I promise you I won't eat the chicken pot stickers just for a free dinner, you know? So I think I, I, that's a tough one. And I think any woman, like, if you feel like you got a date to eat, Mm. I would explore, you know, Yeah. I would, I would really think through that. But a lot of men do have that in their mind. And a lot of men, I feel like are putting walls up because we talked about the ways women are pulled up putting walls up men are putting walls up because they're financial if you find yourself dating at the rate that i'm dating or the data way i'm recommending women to date like there was a point in august when i had like three dates a week now if you're a guy going on three dates a week that you're easily have spent two thousand dollars easily oh yeah pockets are being run unless you you are wise in the way that you're doing it but then maybe that's also how men are vetting like (laughs) Some girl is the coffee girl. Some girl <laughs> is the lunch girl. And then your right. the sister's girl. like, how come I got to be the coffee girl? What's that that's about? Point. I, would, I told my sister, I was like, my thing about being the coffee girl is if you hate them, it was 15 minutes. It's so low stakes. You can make a it's very nice so impression stakes. moment, 30 so minutes of coffee, stakes. and then do the second date, you know? And mm-hmm. sometimes the coffee day will be like, are you hungry? Did you want to? Let's just right. You know, it, it can evolve. It, that was my, my, always fun. My first date was a cafe and then it turned into a club night at the Blonde. Oh, I'm like, was it a cafe? love those days. Yeah, it started at, started oh, at Oh, well, cafe. that was the date, but not how you met. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. I was like. My favorite date 
is ends in a sloppy dance floor makeout. Like, oh my God, I live for a DFMO, honey. See, right? that's the fun, the fun stuff. And the butterflies. Yeah. I love that feeling. Like, you're drunk, I'm drunk, we're dancing, we're kissing. I'm a yeah. I just love those kind of oh, dates. That's so fun. That's so I fun. I live for a sloppy so dance floor makeout when people are like, oh, look at them. And it's like, yes, look at us. Girl. Young love. <laughs> wow. I love, I love that we're like, like taking us out on like a, a positive. I want people to like, to your point, have so much fun with dating. Fun. Like it really have is fun. a good time. I will tell y'all how I got with my man. I stalked that nigga down and I had me a good old time. And they had, yes, it's funny. He probably doesn't know the story. Um, <laughs> I'll briefly tell it. Um, he had a crush on him and I knew he was going to be at this party. So then I like went to the party and was like, oh my God. <laughs> So you're here like see you here and then how did it end dance for me oh out. yeah i was there that night <laughs> that's so fun wait i met my boy on hinge oh, i wish no. more women would stop being afraid of the apps you know the apps are so much control you're i just i'm tired control. of talking to people sending them messages and i just be forgetting to write them back but <laughs> I don't even text my friends. Don't you say you only yeah. do, like, you're very short, like, very few messages? Very short. I barely text my friends. I barely I don't my text parents. my friends, so how do you got to text me. people on apps? You got to get to it on well, the apps. Like, I feel like once you've said the thing and I've said the thing, we're going to exchange one more, like, demographic pleasantry. Like, oh, what part of the city you live in? All of them, blah, blah, blah. By that point, we need to be setting something up. If we're not setting something up, you're going to lose me. This is a dating app. It's not a conversation app. Mm. It's a dating app. Mm. Our goal is to go on a date. So I just wish mm. more women would feel like you're in control. Also, on dating apps, sometimes you have to make the first move. If you are literally in limbo waiting for him to say something or waiting for him to ask you out, again, people are afraid of rejection. Yeah. So like, I, I always say something along the lines of like, like I, my favorite day to swipe is Thursdays, because I say the same thing every Thursday. What are what you getting into weekend? this weekend? That's it. Yeah. Because when you swipe in on a Monday, now it's like if we don't get together on a Tuesday, we got to try to keep this chat alive to mm -hmm. the weekend. <laughs> oh, another rule: you can't have my weekends. Strangers cannot have my weekends. That's a good I can, one. That's a good like rule. you can't have like a prime weekend real estate so like i'll be like do you want to get lunch do you want to get a coffee yada 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 do you want to get a drink before i have to do something else that's how i met my current boo i was like i'm going out tonight do you want to get a drink and i ended up being late i had a sloppy oh, make out in the damn it. bar yeah. okay and my piece of advice go out by yourself she Don't has a she has a thing on this Oh, you have a thing on this? Yes. That's how I met my fiance alone. by myself. You have to go out alone or you have to go out with one girl max. No one's approaching a group of 50 chicks. Nope. And if the girl you go out with either needs to be on your same wave, but not a desperado. But she also not needs a desperado. <laughs> you know, the one that's yes. like, I got to get chills. I got to meet a boy tonight. She ain't like, lying. Yes. No desperado. <laughs> And if she's in a relationship, she got to be down. She got to be down to act like she's not. I have a really close... I got you. I got you, lady. Yeah. I was going to say, Shade really will do that. A close girlfriend who, when we go out, like, she'll want to go to, like, real night. Like, no, 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 no. Mm. I have a friend that's in a nine-year relationship, and she's like, when dudes buy a drink, she'll be talking to them, entertaining them, having a good time. And at the end of the night, she's like, oh, I have a boyfriend. They'd be like... <laughs> right. Thanks for the drinks. I love like, it. Right. Drinks. I love that. Trying to help this one out and your friend. They've paired. I'm going home to my partner. So <laughs> sorry about it. But like that's it. You want to be either alone or with one other person who's on your way. Mm -hmm. That part. And don't be afraid to approach people. I don't know why. Well, it's a rejection. I'm not approaching like, anyone. It's oh, <laughs> I think I approached a man last night and got his number. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm I have a three pronged <laughs> way to approach people that I've been using since the 10th grade and it never fails. Give it to me. You start with a salutation, a real natural one. Anything you would not normally say to a person you know, don't say to a stranger. Don't say grand rising, salutation, <laughs> good evening. But like you don't say good evening to your friends at the bar. 
So just start with hello. <laughs> hey. Hi. Oh my God. Grand Second, Christ. state your desire. Not a long-term desire, but your desire. What brought you over here? And usually I say, I noticed you and I wanted to meet you. That's a ne- that's the desire. That's it. That's Easy. really it. I don't think you're my husband. I don't know nothing about you. I just saw you and I wanted to meet you. And then you make a request. Like, can we exchange numbers or you know, you want to exchange Instagram or something? Make the request. Now, now the natural conversationalist, I me, I'm a, we'll be speaking <laughs> and laughing. But if you know you're not a natural conversationalist, make your request early and make an exit and be like, me and my friends are actually about to go, but can we, you know, maybe stay in touch mm. and go, 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 abort, abort, abort. Especially no. if you know you're fat, like go, go, go. And that's it. It works every time. The only people who reject you, people who are in a relationship, you want them to reject you. People who are not attracted to you. And that is scary to people, but that is a gift. Someone yeah. who does not, is not attracted to you. If they say yes to you, they'll be punishing you for the whole time you know them. Mm. They'll be making you jump through hoops. They'll be treating you bad. Like you want someone who's not attracted to you to not choose you. And someone mm. who's not open. This dating pool is for all of us who are open. So if you closed off, you got things to work through, go for you. Go away. Yeah. But anyone else is at least going to be like, well, let's exchange Instagram or something. They're at least, you're going to pique their interest. Yeah. So approach using my three prong and like reframe that. rejection. I love because that. I love I'm that. unrejectable. Period. Period. Uh, Period. If you get a high from shopping, I think you'll get a high from bagging. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you just, that's my housewife <laughs> tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I get a high from shopping and I get such a high from bagging. I've been bagging since 03 <laughs> and I, I never went back inside. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so, so, so much. Um, I don't know how open you are to sharing your socials or your information, but please, if the people want to find you, hear more of the balcony chat. Oh yeah, you got to be open because I'm going to link the uh, IG anyway. So um, please <laughs> let people know where to find you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Nicole Alabi, N-I-C-H-O-L-E-A-L-A-B-I. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, I'm at work. Period. Love it. And bagging these. Our bag of knees or having red wine on the couch with my little boo. We actually had red wine in Prospect Park the other day watching the swans. The ship was dumb. Oh my God. Oh, I love that. <laughs> well, thank you for joining the group chat. Thank you, thank you so you for much. for having me. This is so fun. What would you do? Now this week for What Would You Do? I have been watching old New Jersey housewives. And when I tell you, I think it's probably one of the best friend franchises, like old Jersey. Like I'm mm-hmm. on season, I'm on season either three or four, and it's like golden. Every episode is like edge of my seat. What? Um, <laughs> it's so good. Um, I skipped season two, I believe, just on accident, and I just can't go back now. But anyways, um, what would you do if you had in-laws that you hated oh god like so basically i'll give you the if you don't know yeah. Teresa and her brother joe are in a big fight because Teresa and joe's wife melissa don't get along and in fact Teresa would call joe and say things like your wife would leave you if you made less money she doesn't really love you she's a gold digger like all this crazy shit and she's like bro i am his wife I is it is her is her shit children. legitimate or no? No. Oh, then that's just crazy, right? Like if my if my family, how could that be legitimate? Like, how do you know? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. Maybe she said something, or she just like I could just I got a feeling about that girl. I well, don't she like claims she got a feeling, but you can't mm-hmm. do that to someone's wife and mother and mother of their, of their kids. kids. Yeah, I've had some people. I know some people that have had this type of situation happen where their their family was like super rude to their partner, and they stopped talking to their family. And I was like, damn. But then I also saw it as like a, a true like indication that you ride with your partner and not on some like, fuck you, mom. But it's like when you come around and you learn how to have respect for my wife, come see me. And honestly, I, like I think that. that's the right the right thing to do. I don't know if you saw those series of charts that have been like floating around Instagram about like in life when you're, you know, how does 
okay, in life, oh, you yes. spend the most amount of time with friends at age 18 and yep. then it kind of tapers down. But like the most important relationship in your life is your partner. That's who and, you're and your, s- your relationship with yourself. That one was like yourself. super high. But yes, and yes. then your partner becomes like right there. Yes, yes. your uh, with other person would be your partner. And it's like, you can't allow like, yes, family and the ideal situation is your family and your partner get along. Right. But like, if they're not respecting your partner, then how can they be family? Cannot. Yeah. Cannot. Yeah. It sucks. It's super sad. Because then you have to really like work to like not, I don't know. No, I think that's the right way to to go about it. Oh, as long, no, but truly your family has to be tripping. Yeah. Like if, if your partner is actually trash and your family's <laughs> telling you that they're trash but you just still want to like be with your partner and then you cut your family off it's giving your in some kind of manipulative like weird ass situation yeah i would agree with that. some intervention but um yeah i would agree wow with that. but That's yeah tricky if you want to get on my same page you know get yourself a peacock account <laughs> and watch jersey <laughs> From the beginning, it is so fucking good. You know oh what? My God. I can't take like old looking, like quality of film. Girl, the drama is so <laughs> juicy. It is you know, so juicy. It's not in HD. Start, I mean, watch season like, one. Washed out. Okay. Watch I'll try. season one and then do what I did because I don't know if season two is good, but <laughs> season three season and season three four. Oh, okay. I'm I think sure. season four is really fucking crazy. But anyways, um, thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. As usual, we are Black Girl Sexing coming out every Wednesday. And you can follow us on Instagram at Black Girl Sexing, on TikTok, Black Girl Sexing, YouTube, Black Girl Sexing, website, blackgirlsexing.com, Black Girl Sexing. And the email, if you want to send us what would you do, is hello at blackgirlsexing.com. Love you for listening. Bye. Bye.